my name is Anya and I'm going to show you how to do an HDMI port repair on a PlayStation 5. So here's the port right there. It's not giving out a signal. Um, I know from when you're looking at it, it doesn't look like it's damaged, but it, the system could be loose internally. And we won't fully know until we open the system up, tear it down, and get to the motherboard. Then we can see uh, if it really is the HDMI port or not, but most likely it is. So let's start the disassemblement now. First, we're going to pop off the top shell. So you go like this, pop it off. Then this is the disc version, so it's going to look something like this. You are going to have to take the warranty sticker off. That's right there. You're going to have to take that off and the flap. Um, unfortunately, it's going to be very hard for me to film this while also getting like a clear image of what it's like to disassemble the system. Um, hopefully in the future I can have someone film me disassembling it, a uh, head shot down, that way you can see everything. Uh, but for now, let's just disassemble it like this. So first, I get my screwdriver, and basically, oh wait, let me press. I'm gonna go to the flat head end of it. There we go, and then we just, we do have to remove the warranty sticker. So, it's just a little heads up. Then, I always start by taking off the flap, which has the ribbon cables for the fan. There we go. Then, I take off this side. Just pop it off right there. Okay, then I go back, and I'm going to go to my Phillips head. And I'm going to take off this part right here. Okay, then we remove this part. Now I'm going to go back and you're going to go to your T9. Okay, first I start off by removing the vent on the fan. And here we go. The PlayStation 5 has actually been a very common system that needs to get repaired. I would recommend getting an HDMI port adapter just to keep it from just to keep from your port getting damaged or loose, especially if you're like plugging the HDMI cord in and out. Okay, then we remove the fan. There we go, this is the fan. Remove that. Then I'm gonna also remove these other two cables. Okay, then I'm gonna take these. So there's a lot of screws in the PS5. Uh, a lot of these little silver ones. I'm just gonna set that off right there. So it does take a while to disassemble. But after you do it enough times, I swear it's like, it goes by fast. There we go. And again, I apologize for the quality of this video. I am doing this all by myself. This is my first time ever filming a YouTube tutorial on a repair. So like full length repair. So please bear with me hopefully uh, i can get better equipment in the future that way my videos are not you're not just seeing this you're you actually can see like what i'm doing <laughs> to the console so hopefully i can do that in the future i honestly we're doing these repairs i've gotten a lot of experience working on all different types of issues with all different types of consoles and I have to say my favorite one to repair is the PS5 just because it's I don't know it's just you get you gain you gain so much experience when you do it so I love I love learning so like every 
how I do it. It's just another learning experience. Okay, so then we're going to take this plastic off. When I disassemble, I always keep the screws in the same places and then I just pop it off because then when you disas when you reassemble it, it's so much it's so much easier to reassemble when you just keep the screws in the place and just set that off to the side. All right, now I like to remove the disk drive. So you wanna be very careful because there's a ribbon cable right there. You wanna make sure that you pull down on the little silver bar, remove the ribbon cable, and voila, there you go. You just took off the disk drive. Okay, now we're gonna remove another little ribbon cable go right there and then we're going to remove this ribbon cable and then remove, remove these two, two wires right there okay then you're going to get your t9 again and then you're going to take out all these like little silver screws there's so many so i will try to be as fast as i can okay here we go i really don't want this video to be too long so I'm sorry, hopefully like if I edit it or something I can like speed this up just so you don't have to hear me ramble and ramble and ramble. There we go. Just gonna take these out and here we go. I know, I don't know, I don't know if I'm holding the screwdriver wrong or whatever but this is just the fastest way to get these little screws out. So we're just gonna go like this. There we go. I would say the hardest console that I've ever disassembled that I've disassembled so far is the Series X. That system is very hard to get down to. Uh, I remember the first couple of times that I worked on those, I would get so nervous. <laughs> so stressed out disassembling it because it's like big and boxy and there's a lot of screws so if you don't like rem if you're disassembling it you don't remember like what screws go in the right places it can be really confusing and you might damage something because this series xbox series x actually has two motherboards so there's one motherboard with the hdmi port on it and then there's the other there's the other motherboard that's like connected to the power cable and stuff not the power cable but it's connected to like these other wires i don't exactly know but yeah i like i said i learn new stuff all the time like i'm still learning so like i'm not gonna say that i know everything about gaming consoles i don't but that's what's cool about it is that the more technology advances the more like i'm widening my horizons the more i'm the more i am learning because i have to say about a year ago i really did not know anything about gaming consoles like i'm talking about like the the skeleton of the systems like I knew nothing about it I, I knew nothing but now like I know a little bit of something I'm not a genius but I know a little bit of something and I really don't like the way my hands look and I don't like that the shot is just getting like my hands right now I really wish that you that the shot was getting more of like what I'm doing right here so yeah I apologize we'll just have to bear with me hopefully I can get this straightened out more there we go this is actually like my little work office area i have like a little uh, area where i put consoles that i'm currently working on here so we're gonna get those sorry let me give you a better shot there we go so the ps5 has liquid metal so FYI, when you're disassembling the system, you might want, you have to be very, very careful because you don't want to get the liquid metal uh, on anything. It will, it was, it will damage the motherboard if you get the liquid metal like on any part of it. So, uh, so that's like, there are some complicated things about working on the PS5 because you have to be very, very careful or, or else you can like 
damage it more. It, like I said, like it's like the, the Series X. You have to be careful, otherwise you're gonna damage the. Instead of repairing it, you're gonna damage it even more. So you have to. That's like there's just a couple things to keep in mind, and I don't know. I know I'm rambling. <laughs> I like I this whole making videos and stuff like I get kind of camera shy and I don't like I'm new at talking and stuff so please be kind <laughs> okay and now I just have this one and then I have one more silver screw one more T9 silver screw there we go all right, now we can take the metal heat shield off. All right, so now we're gonna pop this off. Okay, be careful of those ribbon cables right there in the corner. And then I go like this. And then I'm gonna remove this big ribbon cable that's actually for the power, it's actually for the power button. It's what gives the power button white. So I'm actually gonna remove that right now. Like I said, pushing back the little silver and then pushing it out that's the proper way to take it out and then you're gonna go back to your Phillips head there we go and then you're gonna take out the heat sink screws which are the most important screws if you lose them you are there we go it's gonna be very bad so then we're gonna move this Okay, now, drum roll, now we can remove the motherboard. There we go. Just put one more scoop, sorry about that. Remove this little Phillips one. Sometimes you don't need to remove it, but this, sometimes you do, and in this case, you just need it to. All right, so here, we go. we're gonna pop this bad baby out. Alright, and look at the liquid metal, look at that. Alright, now, big reveal, is it the port or not? Yep, it is definitely the port. Uh, it's definitely the port, you can definitely see it's damaged, I know you can't see right there, but uh, hopefully when I have the system under the microscope, I can have a better view of you to see like what indicates the damaged port or not. Um, Okay, and there we go. Be very, very careful when you have it in your hands. Okay, let's go replace the HDMI port on this bad baby. Hi, so now I'm back. I have the motherboard on the workbench, and now I'm going to show you just how, why it is the port and why it's damaged. So when you're looking at the port right there, when I tilt it up, you can see, see how damaged the port is? You can see that the pins are misaligned. The port is actually pushed back. I don't know if you can see it right there. Yeah. Port is pushed back. You can see that the pins are misaligned. Once I am done with the repair, you'll actually see what it should look like. So that's it for now. And I'm gonna put the camera back up on the stand because I want you to see how I tape it. Also, you do have to remove the battery before you solder, start anything on the repair. You do have to remove the battery. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do before I start the repair, like I said, always remove the battery. So I'm just gonna pop the battery off right now. There we go. And now I'm gonna get my scissors and my tape. And I'm just gonna tape the parts that I don't wanna get damaged. So I just got the tape. Let's see, that size is good. Here. And let's go over 
I will show you a close-up of like what it looks like and how I take it once I'm done. So it's right there. I when I do it, I like to cover like that much, like that much. Okay, and then I go on the back side and then cover the back. I always remove this part as well, this little part. Um, and then I add the space. There we go. This one doesn't need to be as big as the other one because the space isn't as big. So you don't have to go crazy with it. You don't have to do too much deep on this part. All right. Again, I apologize for the quality of this video. I know it's like so, so bad. Okay, so I'm gonna put my tape away. All right. Now I will put it under the microscope and just show you how I do it. That is how I have it taped right there. Just making sure that the little chip right there is protected. There we go. There's a close up of it. All right, and then we have the view on the microscope. There we go. All right, now I'm going to get my flux and I'm going to add flux to this. Put it right there. Now, I am not left-handed, but I'm trying to film this. Like I said, you guys, I am the worst at this. So please, be kind. We gotta put some solder. Come on, come on. Not solder. We gotta put the flux right there. Come on. Sorry, really gotta push it with all your strength. There we go. Okay. Woo! Okay. <laughs> all right, now let's start the soldering. I have my soldering iron on. Now I just have to turn this on. And I'm gonna switch the camera right now. But for now, do, do, do. okay, let's start. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry this angle is very bad, but I just have to make do with what I have. So I'm gonna get my solder right here. And because I already have like the flux on everything, it's all good to go. I'm just gonna get my soldering iron. And I'm basically going to put solder, lay solder on the pins. So right here. bunch of solder laying on the pins. Here's another close up. There we go. Now we're gonna put solder on the other side. So now we're gonna apply solder on these two points right there. These right there and then right there. You're gonna apply solder. Okay. So for this I flip it over like this. I get my Flux, apply flux, there we go, and then I get my 
get my soldering solder, and then I get my soldering iron again. This one you very want you want to be generous with the solder as well. Like I said, the more soldered and the better quality flux you have, the easier the repair is going to be, and then the easier it is to take off the old board. So I get my soldering iron, and it's going to apply solder. show you how I'm gonna fix that one second let me put my let me change the view okay so I have the camera right there that way you can kind of see how I clean this up okay first I'm gonna get my little cotton ball and I'm just gonna remove the old flux there we go Side one 
soldering iron and just clean that up because you don't want to have any you don't want to have any uh, points you don't want the pins to touch there we go so just gonna make that like that I do it like this it always works for me so I never have an issue then let me just clean it up. Okay, there we go. Now the pour is a little cleaner. Okay, and then now I'm actually going to be adding solder to this and then this and this part and this part because in order to, when I install the new port, uh, I have to add some more. So let me just put some more flux there. There we go. And I will change the point of view of the camera. Okay, like I said, I'm going to just flip the board over. And look at that, just to show you. And then, so I just to add more solder to those little points right there and then I can basically just like put the new port on so let me just turn it here and here we go okay add more flux points anytime you're gonna solder something you have to put flux on for it I don't you probably already know that I don't know honestly I'm you guys already know that so there we go. I'm so nervous. I'm 
never filmed this before. So hopefully it goes well. Okay, okay, let's go. Let's do this. 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 Okay, let's go. Let's So here is the port now. Do you see how the pins are aligned? Now let's see. There we go. Okay. Alright. You see how none of the pins are touching next to each other? That's good. That's what we want. Now I'm going to check to see if the pins move. So one second. Alright. I get very, very lightly with the very very skinny tweezers very lightly you're gonna check the pins so I'm gonna show you ready okay one one okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let me change my angle. 16, 17, 18, 19, and then 20. So none of the pins move. They, they're secure. Now I'm going to clean the port and then I'm going to reassemble it and then test the system. But for now, and then let me just show you one second. It's very important that you have the solder right there on the ends 
because if you don't, the port could p potentially become loose again. So you want to make sure there's a lot of solder there on the corners. That way the port is, you know, it's like good and secure. So you want to do that. And then let's just look at the pins now. There we go. Okay. Okay, so this is the port right now. Now I'm gonna just reassemble it. Before you reassemble, make sure to put the battery back in. So let's do that right now. There we go. Okay, and then just double check your work, you know, make sure there's no solder on the motherboard. There we go. Okay, now the battery is good. All right, there we go. Like I said, now I'm going to reassemble it and let's test it. All right, so now I have the motherboard in and I'm only going to reassemble up until the point where it's just, I'm just gonna test it. So I'm not gonna reassemble fully yet because what if the, like, what if it doesn't get the signal? Like, what if something happens? Then I don't want to have it reassembled completely and then I have to disassemble it again and yada yada yada. So I'm going to put this back in. Okay, then you get the heatsink plate. Set it there. Then you get the two big Phillips screws. There we go. And then just pop that in. There you go. Put that in. Make sure the screws are secure. They cannot, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have them loose. You want to make sure that they're like good and secure. So put that there. And then I'm also going to put back the little Phillips screw back where the hard drive will go right there. Put that there. Okay, and now I'm gonna put the, by the way, like I already put the ribbon cables back in. I just didn't show it in the video, but I already put the ribbon cables back in. So now we're gonna put the metal plate back on. There we go. Okay then put those cables back and now I'm going to switch it back to the T9. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to put a couple of the silver screws in. You don't need to put all of them back in if you're going to just test. You just need a couple just because, you know, you want to make sure the plate, the plate is good, but it's not necessary. But when you when you're done and you're done testing, yes, you definitely want to put all the screws back in. And then here we go. There's a lot, but just be patient, you know. It, uh, it's really better to take your time, fully burn it, and then once you do it a couple times, you get really fast at it and it's like a piece of cake. It's like nothing. Okay, then I'm just going to put this one there. But trust me, if you don't put all of these little screws in, the system will live. It will run perfectly fine. <laughs> there are like essential screws where it's like if you don't put them back in the system, you could possibly damage it. But these little ones, if you don't put all of them back, if there's like three missing, it's not the end of the world. The system, the system will function exactly the same. So it's not a big deal. Let's put these back. Okay, now I'm gonna put the disk drive back in because you do wanna have the disk drive in while you test. So there we go, there's our disk drive. Put it in place, make sure it is in the right proper place. Make sure, and then you're gonna put back the ribbon cable. Cool, there we go, we got it in. Heard that click. Perfect. Now we're gonna put on the plastic top, but not put in, not screw in the screws yet. Just lay it flat on it. It'll live. This is gonna live. We're just testing it. 
it's all good to go. Make sure it's there. Make sure you're not damaging anything. Plug the ribbon cables back in. There we go. Plug those back in. Boom. Plug the fan back in. You do need to plug the fan back in when you test. Okay, and there we go. Now I have it ready just to test it, just to see if it works. Let's look at the port. There it is. All right, now come with me while we test the system. Okay, so now I'm gonna plug in the cables and test the system. Let's see how it goes. Okay, we have the port. Now I'm just gonna turn on the system. And we got the blue light. No, let's just see. Okay, come on. <laughs> let's see if it works. Please. Please, come on, come on. Come on. Let's see if this repaired it. Yay! Okay. There we go. Now just let it start back up. Come on. Give it some time. Still, still flashing blue. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna plug in a controller and let's do this. Okay, so yeah, look, it does output the signal. Now I'm just gonna finish reassembling it and then I will check back in and I guess I'll just, I don't know, just. I guess good to go. So yeah, I'm so excited. Okay.